What's up everybody and welcome back. Well, it's finally moving day, so let's get to it. Hey everybody and welcome back to Roscoe's Reef. So like I said in the opening, moving day is, is upon us. This is actually the day after moving day. So as you can see, ocean is not swimming around the tank anymore. Um, things went pretty well. There were some uh, things that happened during the day that were pretty interesting. So we'll get into that in a minute. But um, what I wanted to do with this is when I purchased him, he is one of the fish that I had on my bucket list. Uh, it was really, really important that I, I get him specifically because one, I always wanted the powder blue tang in my tank. And two, when I was looking at him, he was kind of getting bullied by an angelfish. So I kind of rescued him from that tank and brought him into mine. Now, when I purchased him, he wasn't really that big of a fish uh, and he fit really well in my tank. But as time went on, my intentions was, were um, to increase the size of my tank to the point where he had a, a pretty roomy home. Well, one thing leads to another and before you know it, he's grown up and he's still in a 90 gallon tank. So I knew one, he needed a bigger tank to be in. Uh, two, the size that he was restricted me from putting other fish in because he would just basically defend his territory as blue tangs, do, the powder blue tangs do. And um, it prevented me from doing that. So once the conversation happened be between me and Travis um, from Fisher Hex, I knew the 300 gallon build that he has going on is perfect for him. So Travis came over and uh, between both of us, the whole uh, catching him and putting him from my tank to uh, a holding bucket to get him over to Travis's house went pretty smooth. So with that being said, let's get to the video itself and uh, I'll be able to show you a little bit more of what happened. So the first thing that happened was uh, when we actually came down, we, uh, Travis came to the house and um, we sat down had dinner and kind of talked about how we were going to plan on doing this move. The first thing that we did was there was a piece of the bonny coral that I was going to give to him for his 300 gallon build to let it grow out. You could see that right here is where the cut site is. Okay. Um, and the funny thing about this is as we started cutting, I was, you could see right here is an, a line on the coral. That was the initial cut. Uh, site and when we went to cut it that coral bent the bone cutters that I had in my fragging kit you can see how this gap is now formed and this head of the cutter has been bent back Travis and I could not believe that that one coral completely and utterly bent and distorted that head so we had to move to plan B and that was to actually step up the cut a little higher as you can see now where where the cut line is right here so we had to move the line that we were cutting up a little bit and also luckily I had another pair of bone cutters available so uh, that worked out really well but you can see right here look at that it totally totally I'm holding this cutter straight right now and it's pointing down it totally bent that we couldn't believe it. So it goes to show you, you never know what your coral is going to do to your equipment. So always have a backup. So let's get on to the, to the video where um, we actually got ocean into the net. So here we are at the tank and we're kind of discussing what we're going to do after we net, net him, hopefully if everything goes well. Well, we going fresh water or we're going tank water. Tank water. Now, by fresh water, I meant fresh salt water, of course, and we chose to go with tank water because we figured he'd be more adjusted to that as opposed to just straight out fresh salt water. 
I had not fed the tank in a couple days with the hopes that baiting him with my fingers, which he usually comes up while I'm feeding the tank and eats right from my fingers, we'd get him in a position where we could net him easily. But he had other ideas. Yes, he did have other ideas, and as you can see, he didn't go for it. So we chose another route. So I got a cube of frozen mysis and the minute my fingers went into the tank with this mysis and I started scraping it a little bit, Ocean Order automatically responded to it. Uh, the whole aim of this was again to keep him in this area where we could get nets in the water and be able to move around in hope of uh, trapping him and, and getting him into a net. Also, I just want to remind you that we paid very close attention to the way we did this. We didn't want to endanger his health or stress him out any more than he had to be to uh, get this accomplished. The whole aim of this is to get him out of this tank and get him into a bigger tank where he'd be more at home. So now Travis is lowering the nets and we're talking about the fact that every time he sees that net, he heads towards the back of the rock. So we kind of discussed the way we're going to do this to keep him in an area um, that would be easily um, accessible by us with the nets to catch him. Now here it is again in slow motion and even it looks a lot more violent than it was. It was over in a second and he took to the net and just kind of rested and relaxed in there while we prepared the bucket to transfer him into. And it was at this time that Travis and I decided to play a little trick on my wife. You'll, you'll enjoy the new fish, trust me. What new fish? <coughs> the ones that I'm getting. The ones? Yeah. How many are you getting? 35, 40. Shut up. Don't let me not like you. <laughs> so that kind of didn't go over too well, but she does realize that I do intend to bring some more fish into the tank, and, uh, you know, she's bracing for that one. Now, again, uh, we're filling the bucket with water and finishing that off, and he's resting comfortably. And it was at this time that I realized Travis really cares about his fish as much as I do, because he starts talking to Ocean and letting him know to calm down and what's going to happen next. So I know he'll be okay and here he is in his bucket getting ready to go back to Pennsylvania with Travis with his airline. So that's it for this uh, episode. This is part one. I'll leave a link to Travis's channel so you can check out part two. And as always, this is Scott. I will see you all soon around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe.